So, your friend went to, would you say Tennessee? He, he did a Tennessee, Kentucky thing with some friends and he ended up doing a couple of those testing, you know, tastings or whatever. And just kind enough to bring you back one. I mean, I paid him for it. I told him he found something. I'm always into the stuff I can't get around here. He ended up oh, buying yeah. himself one of the same things. So, I'll, to, I'll Google and show you what it looks like later. It's kind of, I'm going to keep this bottle because it's such a cool looking bottle. They're one of the old style distilleries. They're still, I can't remember the term they use, but it's like, you know, they distill differently than the other ones. Okay. So. Well, that's cool. And normally, as soon as they make a batch, it's like gone. So oh, yeah. it's like a hot commodity down there, I guess. Did you try some yet? I've had it once before. Okay. So I just dropped it off at the house and put on a pair of shorts to show off some leg. Oh, right before you came here. Yes. Yeah, so oh, I right got, on. Well, the last time I got it, which is a year and a half ago, a guy brought it back from Kentucky again. Mm -hmm. It got so hot in the car, it popped the top. It popped the thing. <gasps> I remember so, you yeah, telling me so that. I didn't want this one to happen. And he had it already sitting out in the um, parking lot all day at work. It didn't get really anything warmer until the afternoon, so. Interesting. Yeah, but it's got a nice, um, like, real mellow taste. You know, it's good, you know, on the rocks or neat, however you want it, but it's got a distinctive flavor that makes a couple citrus notes and some other things. So. What, what were the plans last night? You said you were going to go out and do something. Did you guys go out for dinner? Well, we were just going, because it was my first, like, official day back. Oh, I got you. And honestly, I'm glad you didn't come because we ended up canceling plans. And like, I'm, I was just so freaking tired. By the end of the day, I was I was. Oh, like, I didn't leave there until like just after five. <clears throat> and I'm like, by the time I get out of here with the traffic, it was six. I'm like, you know what, so I just want to would have been and, fine, but. Eh, it was just too much going on. And then I get up today and I look at things and I'm like, well, he said he changed oil and this and that, but he didn't put a new sticker on. He didn't reset the, od the od odometer for the oil life. So I left him a message on the way out here saying, uh, did it happen or didn't happen? I could reset the oil life and I checked the paperwork and it says, customer request an oil change. Customer request this. So I mean, I don't know if the request means they did it because there was, you know, everything was under warranty, you know, free of charge. But I mean, they're usually pretty good up there. So do you know if he changed the oil or not? Uh, that's why I left him a message for that. Can you please confirm? Right, because normally they put a the little sticker on the car that says... Yeah, I mean, my sticker says I'm Same uh, one. Yeah, 14, well, less than 200 miles away from the oil change with 18% oil life left. He didn't even reset the digital thing. Oh, so, wow, yeah. But I mean, I'm sure he did. If he did it, I know how to reset it. I mean, it's not a big deal. Yeah, but yeah. they're supposed to do that. No, well, I'm just more or less because you get the new oil in it, so right. nothing happens. <laughs> right. Here you are thinking, oh, I asked for it. Maybe they did it. <laughs> Go another 3,000 miles. And the engine goes to put. That's my thought. <laughs> what the heck? Well, you should never assume, sir. You know what that word breaks down into. You, if you assume, you are the ass out of... Both you and me. That's it. <laughs> I learned that in driver's training. Hmm. Never assume. That's what I need my license plate to, to say. I'm back like that. Uh, Never assume what I'm going to do. Yeah, so Lou always says, never trust a blinker. Yeah, it's just a suggestion. <laughs> I think I'm going to be going this way. I followed him home in the Dodge Dakota on the freeway. When we got home, I said, you know, I wasn't sure if your blinker was working or not because you never used it, sir. They don't come on that model, Jess. <laughs> oh, yeah, they work. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah, Grandma's good. Got to go see her. Yeah, at first I forgot, and then I remember when you said, Every day is Groundhog Day. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hey, she gets to meet you every day. Well, that's the thing, and like that's what's so cool about it. Um, because I have been around the whole time that she's been, like, had the sickness. And when she was in the nursing home, I was there at least once a week. 
Um, this long term they're usually better with, right? What do you mean? The long term memory they're better with. They lose the short term memory first. Right? Yes. Yes. Exactly. So she you're, remembers. You're, you're in her mind. You're in her memory still. Well, and it's one of those things like she can't really place. When I was in the nursing home, she always called me by my name, but now I don't see her as often. But. Like she says, I don't, I, I forget your name, but I know I love you, kind of thing. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't mind. You know what? I just, I go with the flow. The Is worst... there anybody else in the family that had the same thing? Is it hereditary? Or do you know? Yeah, her mom had it. So it's hereditary? Yeah. Yep. Well, and then I can weird. notice it in other family members where I'm like, whoa, you're really losing it, but... It's one of those things, it's it's a very long, slow, progressing illness. But my aunt and uncle, they do a fabulous job with her. Well, it's good that she's not frazzled or, you know, gets, you know, kind of irritated because of what's going on. I mean, she seems like she's a happy-go-lucky type of person. She is, but it's all how you handle it. Because there are moments that she, you know, she's confused all the time. She's yeah. always going to be confused, but with somebody like that, you have to have a lot of patience with, and you can't, the worst thing you can do is try to correct them, or get frustrated, or yell at them, or say, don't you remember, 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 because they, they just can't. Right. So you just got to go along with it. If you're Joe one day and George the next, then whatever, or if you're hey you, well, it's close. <laughs> you go with it, you yeah. just... You go, no, I'm, that's the worst thing. And the worst thing about it is the people who just, like, don't go and see her, don't care, think like, well, she doesn't rem remember me anyway, so forget that she's a human. Yeah, I mean, what's going on there? I mean, did so many things for you would, you know, I'm sure she's a very giving person. Are you just going to cut her out because of this? Mm-hmm. people... People prove who they are. No, yeah, for sure. And it's and I think that's what frustrates my aunt the most is like the people who don't do anything and should. It's like you know what? So is that her mother then? It's her mother. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your mom's mother, right? My so dad's mom. Oh, your dad's mom. Yep. So this is your dad's sister that's taken care of. Yes. Okay. Yes. His baby sister. Okay. The youngest one. So that's another great thing. Is like my grandma has no idea that she lost a son. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know, it's it's a blessing. How no, about your aunt? Did they make it up here for anything, or did they just stay down there and take care of her? Well, we weren't we, doing a funeral. I thought it'd be like a ceremony. Or something. Yeah, just a celebration of life. And honestly, at this point, because I haven't really talked to many people, and I'm trying to reach out, like, hey, do these dates work for you? I might not do it, or I might just do something with just my dad's girl, me and my aunt. There you go. Honestly, like... Just you, Will, and the... And people the suck. Yep, that's it. It and might... They did a celebration of life for uh, my cousin's son. Well, I don't know if I told you. I had to go to one a couple weeks ago, if you know. No, 26 I years old, died of a rare cancer. What? He lived for a little over three years, so it was something they normally get is kids in the single digits and they normally the last couple of years he got it in the oh, early 20s. Oh, so him and Christopher graduated from the same graduating class at the same school. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I mean, you're sad. I mean, my cousin comes up, you know, hugging me because, you know, I lost my brother when he was young and she's like, I never wanted to join this club. I go, sadly, I don't think there's a choice for whether we can join it or not. They've got for yeah, there's really, a, you know what, sometimes it's like, you wish there were comforting words, and sometimes if you try to comfort somebody, the best thing you can do is just say, I'm sorry. That's it, because... I just said, you know, you got exactly, I know it's tough to you know, lose a, a kid, but you need anything, you know, I gotta do is wait up. Yeah. I mean, I watched to take my dad down. And then my uncle, who is um, you know, married to my mom's sister, I watched him break down. Because that was his oldest grandson. And even the strongest of people and the things like that, it just tears them up. Everybody's got a breaking point, right? Oh, yeah. That's awful.
Well, it's just, I don't know, it's not, it's not natural, it's not how it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah, and then, you know, we, oh, I'm sorry. we had it open cast, and I mean, you know, I just didn't know what to expect, but it wasn't, you know, he looked at me like a claymation thing, mm -hmm. and Danielle, you know, she's into all that stuff, and she went with me, and my mom and dad, Jordan, still, you know, he can't even drive, and Chris, yeah. Chris but she's like, Boy, Dad, the, the person that they did the, that did his casting, you know, they need to help. They need help on doing makeup. I go, he donated a lot of organs to the society, you know, okay. doing research. Okay. And I said, and all the stuff. I said, you don't know what type of canvas this guy had to work with. Go, That's just it, and you can't. They're never gonna look like. Very few funerals, open caskets have I been to where I'm like, wow, they look really good. Even like the last picture that they sent out that, you know, when he had passed that night or whatever. Yeah. He was like with a blanket on and, you know, just, he didn't look like himself. So I'm glad when they did Wait, the, they sent out a picture of him when he was really sick? Oh, I got it in here. I could show you what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But anyways. I'm was, sorry, I know what. It was maybe just like. something to me. It was maybe a few weeks before. He checked himself out of the hospital the last few days. Because okay. he wanted to be at home. But I don't anyways, it's just, I'm glad they had the pictures of him when he was younger. Yeah. You know, and doing well. They had it of his marriage. And, you know, this and oh, that. he was so, married? Yeah, he was married. So, and his husband was there. And, I mean, they were married less than a year, I think. Wow. Oh, I'm so he was sorry. trying to do whatever have you. And they decided that they couldn't put their life on hold anymore. So, they did what they did. It's a nice thing. They want to trip to Switzerland and something over. So they got to do a few things. That's nice. Yeah, it's still. Man. It's like you're just in me. I mean, one thing I said, I just said to my family, I said, cancer holds no, you know, doesn't discriminate race, nope. sex, anything, Nothing. or age. I mean, it'll take all comers, right? You know That's that for a fact. That's it. It, that was my biggest thing, and the, I, because I had all control when my dad passed. It was like everything was on me, and which is fine. I don't mind, but there was a few things I was like really put my foot down on, and I wanted other people's input because I want, I don't want to be the only one making decisions and upset somebody. You know, yeah, for sure. I knew he wanted to be cremated, and he didn't want a fu like a traditional funeral. He's like. Don't waste your money. I don't money. know what they did after that, just because, you know, the parents, grandparents, they're all Catholic, and I don't know if, you know, they'll be allowed in the cemetery or not, because, you know, being that, you know, way, I mean, you know, they probably the think I think they're, what, because he's gay? Yeah. Well, who cares? I, I think that they're, I don't know, it's that. amazing how many things just change, and, yeah. I don't know if, like I said, where he's laid to rest, that was his... Significant others, husbands, you know, wish whatever he did. I mean, I just, we were there supporting. I got to meet him for the first time. The first time at the funeral? Yeah, the first time I met him. I'm surprised he didn't open casket. Yeah, I didn't want anybody seeing my dad like that. You didn't come and see him while he was sick. You don't deserve to see him when he's dead. Yes, standing room only. And the last day. What? I mean, they had seats all the way front to back, and they were out in the lobby. Wow. I bet there was a two. He had people showed up that had been to school with him in elementary and kindergarten oh. talking about him. They they did a whole thing of two hours of memories wow. and things to say. It, it, two Aww. hours of people, things that they remember about him and how he touched their life. I mean, it was very moving. What, do you know what kind of cancer he had? I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't know if my mom does. I can try to find out. So the next time we come, it's a children's type thing. Normally, they're like three, four, five years old. And they don't make it see double digits. So when he was diagnosed, was he diagnosed with stage four, or was he fighting it for a really long time? He was time? diagnosed with stage four. Had um, chemo a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It was a real expensive drug. Um, you know, and then it just each time it took a different toll on him. Got him in remission, I think, once, and then it came back stronger than ever. And, I mean, I just felt bad the last time. I mean, one night they took the paddles to him twice. Just wow. when he passed, they brought him back, and wow. they had the whole family in, you know, from school and working. One works up in Traverse City, one's in school, and so his two sisters came in, and 
relationships, you know, this and that, they all told such unbelievable. And then Alexis, which is his second one, his middle sister. Brendan and I, we were siblings. We fought like cats and dogs. The only thing that we agreed on is we both liked men. <laughs> she brought this up. Everybody, you got to chuckle. She got to chuckle out of the crowd. You know what? That's good, though. She got to chuckle out of the crowd. But, I mean, it was just, it was a very moving thing as to, you know, how they did it. Mm-hmm. It was in Ann Arbor, so I had to drive like a, an hour and something each way. And I drove out there and drove back. But it was horrific traffic. Hold on a second. <laughs> he's, he's, not, home soon. he's not driving the foot. Oh, is that what it is? He sounded like Boom Power from King of the Hill. I was like, what? They must have their own language. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> and so, I wonder if she's getting all this. Oh. I'm not driving the foot. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, at least you got it. I got it. I just heard he's going to be home soon. I didn't hear about the not well, driving. Should not go in somewhere, I thought. The trucks that he drives was making funny noises. So mm-hmm. he's, okay, whatever. Because I thought he was going to be home later, but I got stuff to make him dinner. So, because I was gone for so long, I was gone eight days, eight nights. So he was like, all I... For himself, huh? I would say, yeah, fighting for herself. But all I did for my grandma was cook every single meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Not that it was, like, really elaborate, but it's all I did. So I'm like, I could use a break from cooking, but my husband needs home-cooked meals at the same time. So, I know he's... Well, it's, I mean, it's a sacrifice that you did for your grandmother that you'll, you know, you can look back on and say, I'm happy with what I did, and... He can make it. We are all, we're all tough. We're resilient. If we had to, he could break down and boil a box of macaroni and cheese. Oh, yeah. No, he can do stuff. He's just, he, he doesn't have to because I, I do it. Yeah. But that's my... What you choose to do. We're, we're traditional in that sense. Like, well, I mean, he would have gave you if you wanted a day or two. I mean, because, yeah, you're right. She probably couldn't clean him up after herself, do dishes, do anything. So it was on you, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't mind. I'm, you know what? I'm glad that I got to have that time and yeah. give yeah. back to her all the years that she cared for me. It's like, you know, you got to mm. really. Oh, um, sure. Like they say it's not technically your responsibility, but it should be an honor and it should be something that you want to do for your family as they get older is to care for them because of how they treated you and the people that just throw them away and don't care. Like, to me, you're a piece of shit if you're just going to let your. your I don't know if it's something that is, the values are different, but I know when I was over visiting over in, you know, China, Korea, there's a lot of, like, homes are grandparents, parents, and and siblings in homes, and they take the grandparents in and care for them in their later days. They don't have, like, the assisted livings over there like we do. Yeah, because your family takes care of takes care they of each other. They brought you into the world, you help them go and out. And you help them go out. Yeah. And I've had, yeah. I've I, had, say, I don't know if it's oh. values, money, or a combination of both, but it just seems like that's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do, and nobody can tell me different. Unless your parent was such a piece of shit that they literally tortured you and did horrible things to you, and they deserve to. But you know what? If they raised you right... You'll take care of them. I could see, like, when it happens to my parents, I mean, if my mom goes, my dad will stay in their house as long as he can, just like his dad did. Now, if my dad goes, I could see my mom come and stay in my other bedroom. Yeah. You know, I just think that's, I think that's kind of, you know, just, but I just think it's, that's kind of the way it is, you know, just men are going to be resilient and say, I don't need any help. Yes. I mean, my grandfather, until the very end, when he couldn't do things, and he finally moved into an assisted living. Mm-hmm. And then I took, and he gave me his house, which was very nice and generous of him. He helped me get back on my feet. So, Aww. So he actually, and my dad was a major part of that too. So he actually told his brother and sister, I'll take that as my part of the will, and you guys split up the money. And then he had the house in his and my name, so I didn't have to do the. Super, you know, reassessment of the taxes and do whatever happens. So. Look a good family. 
That's why you're such a good guy. You was raised by good, hmm. good folks. But like I said, my dad with his barn and all that stuff. Because, you know, my mom had a couple of times has said, you know, we should do something like what Don's done. That's all we need. I'm not going to go that. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not giving up my barn. I'm not giving up. So, I mean, you know. And you know what? That's what he's got, you know. Like, so it's. What he's got right now, I mean, what they paid for that house. I think they, when I was going on 18, they bought it. So what would that be? That would be 40 years ago? And they paid under 100. And it's probably on Zillow now. I think it's calling close to half a million. Sheesh! They just paid for it. They just redid both of the bathrooms, upgraded it. Oh, good They're getting ready to do some carpeting throughout, you know, because... My brother, he was the good one for that. His dad kept saying, well, I don't want to do this. I don't want to. Your brother that passed away? Oh, uh, no, my brother Bob. Was How Carolina. many are there, brothers? Three of us total. We were all about three years apart. Okay. So Bob's the middle one. I'm the oldest one. And Dan was the youngest one. Dan was the youngest. Yeah. How old was he when he passed away? 21. So uh, you were 24. I would have been, I was six years old. Oh, you're there, six so years. I would have been going on six, 26. He was like, um, yeah, he was born in 72, I was born in 66, so he was May of 72, I was July of 66, so what were we like then? So he'd be 52. Five years, yeah, so we were like five years, ten months of difference. Gotcha. Aww. But, um, yeah, my mom said he was my twin. And he was, I mean, he was Wasn't he really tall? Like, he was six foot, yeah. I was six five, six six, um, the size of mom. I think I've told you that story before, right? Being at the DuPont thing. Yeah. yeah. Like the milkman? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, Bob told him, Dad, you need to enjoy that, whatever. Don and I, we're fine. And if something comes up, we're going to have to redo the house anyways just yeah. to sell it. So do it and enjoy it. Because my dad was like a miser, like trying to not, I don't need that, I don't want to spend this, I don't want to do that, but... They love now. They walk in, shower, everything. I mean, just like I do. I mean, it's like, yeah, enjoy yourself. Well, it's their home. So it's like. Exactly. I'm sorry I made you a lot of work, kid. Sheesh. I'm sorry I left you. You should have flew to Chicago. I would have cut your hair. <laughs> yeah, so my grandma, when she walks out of the bathroom, my aunt's got a picture of my dad there, right? I go, Grandma, who's that? Oh, that's one of my uncles. <laughs> and you, I love it. I, I love the circumstances, how that... Honestly, when you see the blessings in everything, there's a lot more. See, in. There is a blessing that she doesn't know what happened and it can't hurt her right now. She's got no idea. She got enough going on. Yeah, that she don't know. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, I guess that's one of the... Surprises of that whole thing. You don't know what's coming at you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're not with it. You're aware of all You even understand it, which I guess is a good thing for them. Mm -hmm. Blessing in disguise, as you said. And she even, when she sees Will, too, she's, Oh, I think I see your face before. I like you. You know what I mean? Like, she'll just see, like, she knows that she likes him. She knows that she loves me. She's always, I love you. I love you. You're, you're the sweetest. You're just... You're the best worker here. <laughs> oh, now, where is she age-wise? In her 80s? She's 83. Her mom was 83 when her mom passed away. Same thing. In my memories of my great-grandmother, her mom, everybody says that great-grandma was just the sweetest, kindest, most, like, calm person. And I don't have those memories. I have the memories of when she, I was, like, eight or nine when she passed. Mm -hmm. And she was just a wackadoodle. You know, she had dementia. She would take pizza and mm -hmm. she would try to cut it up with a pen. Or grab the remote and try to call well, somebody. So you, you were younger. Yes. Which is, that's the one thing, I guess, my kids, because my mom and dad were the oldest on both sides of their family. And then I was the oldest in my generation. Mm -hmm. I have kids that are older than my youngest cousin. Oh, okay. So my aunt and uncles are just five, six years older than me. Oh, wow. Wow. So my kids knew their great-grandma and their great-grandpa when they were teenagers. Okay. Now, they lost wow. one on each side. My grandma lost her husband, which is my mom's dad, to a heart attack. He was in his 
late 60s, so they mm-hmm. never knew them. They didn't know the great, the great wow. on, my, on my dad's side. And she was the one that took her darn iron skillet with her everywhere she went. She could do anything in that damn iron skillet. But she always, oh, took care of, always took care of her boys. You know, that was her and my dad's my mom and dad always came down when it was, um, you know, they were going to go do something. And they stayed the night. And yeah, we had everything. We had pancakes, homemade macaroni and cheese. She could make everything. Fried chicken. Aww. Everything was done in that skillet. Grandma. Yeah. We love Grandma. Rest her soul.